In this video, we'll go through some properties of the associated Legendre functions, which were the solution to the uh, theta equation, the azimuthal angle equation uh, in the previous video. So we had defined this factor m of cosine theta or m of mu as a superposition of what we call the associated Legendre functions. These functions are only defined for L being less than or equal or bigger than or equal to zero and the absolute value of M being uh, between zero and L inclusively. This means that M can technically speaking be negative, uh, but we won't really consider that at the moment. So the first uh, property that will be very useful to us is that the second one, QML cosine theta, it diverges when cosine is equal to plus or minus one. And remember theta is the azimuthal angle on a sphere. So a cosine of uh, plus or minus one means either an azimuthal angle of zero, so it's like that on the sphere, or an azimuthal angle of pi, which is at the at the other side of the sphere, the bottom side of the sphere. And there's very few problems that we'll encounter where this condition will be excluded. So in general, we'll simply ignore this factor. Okay, so we don't have to worry about any further properties. We'll just uh, completely throw it out. So that leaves us with uh, the second one, or rather the first one, PM L cosine theta. And the most important property for us will be the orthogonality of these functions. And there's two uh, orthogonality results. One of them is when uh, L, the L's are different and the M's are constant. And the other one is when the L is constant and M is different. So the first one says, if you integrate from minus one to one, P, M, L, U, EML prime of u. So here the m's are the same. L and L prime can be different. And you integrate this with respect to mu. And remember, we had to find mu as being cosine theta. This is equal to the following expression. Okay, so you have some numerical factors, essentially, and you have this chronicle delta that, that uh, kills any term when L is not equal to L prime. Okay, so to put this more explicitly, so it's equal to this numerical factor when L is equal to L prime and is equal to zero when they're not equal. Our second uh, result says that when you integrate from minus one to one, PML mu. So now the L's are the same the M's can be different. You have an extra one minus mu square factor at the bottom. And you integrate with respect to mu. And this is equal to a numerical factor and a chronicle delta 
which will again get rid of any term uh, when m is not equal to m prime. So, it's equal to that when m is equal to m prime and it's equal to zero when n is not equal to m prime. And as usual, this will be useful to us to determine the coefficients for a given boundary condition and collapse the sum from our superposition to a single term. To get an idea of what these functions look like, uh, we'll look at some examples here. So these, uh, these functions, PMLs, are actually polynomials, which again are only defined when m is between zero and l. So for a given value of l, uh, when m is equal to zero, this polynomial is just equal to one. So it's just a constant. For any m bigger than that, it's not defined because it doesn't satisfy this condition. When l is equal to one and m is equal to zero, PML is just equal to cosine theta when the argument is cosine theta. So it's just equal to x in general. And when m is equal to one, it's equal to minus sine theta. Again, for larger values of m, these polynomials are not defined. And uh, the list goes on for different values of L and M. And you can generally find uh, these expressions in mathematical tables for these, uh, for these polynomials. So these are the uh, most important aspects of these functions that will be of use to us in solving partial differential equations. So uh, in the next video, we'll go through an example of how we actually use all of this information to solve uh, a physical problem uh, of uh, applying Laplace's equation in spherical coordinates.